welcome tonight. We call it Christmas at the Opera, and we began with the March of the Torriades from Bizet's Carmen. Um, and do you know what this march means? This is a march that is depicting bull fighting. And of course, we're not going to have anyone going to be injured tonight, but I think it sets a kind of festive mood for the rest of the evening. Now, what is opera? It's called Christmas at the Opera, but what is opera? Can I have a show of hands? Who, who has ever to be, been to an opera performance before? And why, why don't I do this? Who has never been to an opera before? <laughs> it's absolutely fine because my parents are here and it's going to be the first time they're going to sing this. They're going to hear singing in Italian and it's going to be absolutely foreign to them. But I think it's so exciting because we have now so many people who are a little bit interested in what we're going to do. Now, opera. What exactly is opera? 200 years ago, it was the YouTube of today, it was, it was the cinemas of today. In, in the weekends, families, whole families would just go to the opera theatre. In, 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 in almost every town, every city in Europe, there's an opera house. And so the, the role of the opera house is to provide entertainment. And so what happens is something like this. It's actually, it, they call it the interview um, before an act in the opera. What happens is that you have a break, and everyone is, during the break, everyone is eating. There, there, there's food, there's tables, they're sitting around in, in the hall, but somewhere outside, but they're eating and they're drinking, maybe a little bit of champagne, a little bit of red wine. And when they hear the orchestra play something like this, loud, they say, oh, it's time, let's, let's quickly go back. And of course, if it's not so interesting in the opera house, everyone goes home. So it's so important. Um, it's box office that we're talking about. It's the same with movies. If you go to a movie and you think it's not so good, you tell friends, and unfortunately that movie is not going to make so much money. And um, what are we going to do next? Do you know who's Puccini? Puccini is the name of an Italian composer. He's quite a famous composer. After today, when you leave the hall and someone asks you, oh, so how was Puccini? You just have to remember three things, and these are the things that will make you an expert, sound like an expert in, in, in Puccini, in, in, in opera movies. What are the three things? Number one, he was the Andrew Lloyd Webber of his day. He was so famous, and everyone knew his name, and they knew that if Puccini is going to have an opera performed, uh, he wrote a new opera, that opera is probably not going to be so bad. It's, it's not bad. We should, we should listen to it. We should look at the critics and see what they say in the newspapers. Now, the second thing is that Puccini fulfills a lot of, um, what, what do we say, how, how do we say this? He is the stereotypical opera composer. Every stereotype you have about opera, about music, you know, the, the soprano singing high notes and then the glass shatters. It's almost similar to that because we have lots of, he writes so beautifully for the voice, we will have Mimi and she would sing a really, really high note right at the end of, of La Boheme. And, and that is really, really going to be hard. And so he does that, he makes complete magic with melodies. Sometimes the melodies make my hair stand up a little. It's so touching. And the last thing about Puccini, I think this is the most important. If you remember this, you're set. Puccini was a really rich man. He was just, he made so much money from writing operas. And so this is completely opposite to, to um, you think about composers, classical music composers, and you think, okay, like Mozart, maybe his life was a little bit troublesome, he didn't have a very good life, he was always poor, but, so he was absolutely not like that. He was just rich, he was a superstar. Well, so next, what we're going to do, we're going to do La Bohème, we're going to do a scene from La Bohème, it's 20 minutes from Act 1. It's basically a very, a very beginning of the opera where the two main leads meet each other. So I would like to now invite the two soloists for tonight to come on stage, please. Philharmonic do is to have, you know, children perform with really professional musicians, not because we want them to become professionals, 
in, in the future, or they could have this option, but the main aim is so that they're in contact with artists who are, who are really, really committed to their craft. And of course, Miss Jong and Mr. Tan here, they're both very, very professional singers and, and they have, they've dedicated their lives to perfecting this art. So, what happens in La Bohème, in this 20 minutes, the girl, Mimi, is, she's a seamstress, you know, she, she does this, she, she makes clothes. And the man, his name is Rodolfo, who is he? He's actually a university student, he studies poetry. And so, this, he's, a, he's not very rich. So, it's Christmas Eve, and he's alone in his house, he's trying to do his homework, he's trying to do some poetry at home. And what happens? It's not so interesting. It's not such an interesting evening at the beginning, but he hears a knock on his door. And then he says, who's that? And then he hears a female voice. And this will be sung. You'll hear that later. In Italian, but it's okay. And, and, then, and then the female voice would say, no, excuse me. And then he says, ah, it's a lady. And, and, and then the music starts. This is their first meeting. Um, well, let's, let's listen to some music, shall we? she just sing? What happened was that she climbed up the stairs and then she was a little, uh, a little breathless. She says that, could I borrow, in the past, the original libretto was that, uh, could I borrow a light for my candle which has run out? This was, this was in 1840. This was the original setting, more than 150 years ago. But now, we changed it a little and she says, hey, my iPhone uh, just ran out of battery. <laughs> Do you have a charger that I could use? And so that's what she does. But then, but then you hear in the music, da, 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 da. And, and she sort of, oh, I'm a little fainty, and, and, and then he's a little bit concerned. So there's, there's a lot of drama. And of course, if you know the text, it's good. If you don't know the text, it's okay. The music, a good composer has the music speaking for itself. Now listen to this in the clarinet. He, he's, he's playing, he played something just now, which is really, really good. Yeah, that, that is Mimi's theme, that is her song. And, and what did Mimi start out with? You know what the instrument is? It's a clarinet. And you listen to the sound and you feel it's so serene, it's so calm, it's so... It's, it's, just, it's just a very, very peaceful sound. And that is what Mimi wants Mimi to be. She's supposed to be, she should be a really simple person. She's a seamstress. She likes flowers. That's her, that's her, that's her life. That's how she is. He is very different. He is an artist. He is a poet. He's not so rich, but he's a poet and he has that kind of feeling. And, and you would hear this in the music. We'll, we'll go next. What happens in, 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 in this is that we have 20 minutes of music. It's split into four five minute sections. Puccini is really kind with this. It's so easy for us to listen to everything. First five minutes, they meet. This is what happens. The next five minutes, he will sing. A song and it's his song it's this is the five minutes that he alone says to say that you know, I am poor but I am an artist and you hear this in the music let's let's do this
So did you hear how broad that sound was? He says, in povertà, povertà, the Italian for poverty. In poverty, it's okay, uh, because my heart is made of, uh, my spirit, I, my, my spirit is a millionaire, I am a millionaire. And he said, oh, I can't do that, that's why I put that thing. But he says, and you hear how broad, he's, so he's basically saying, he's basically saying his best points, he's, he's, he's showing off to the girl, he's saying, this is, this is me, I'm, I'm an artist. And now we have her reply to him after he has finished what he does. So this is the, the third quarter, the, the next five minutes. Shall we have this star three? what she said. It means, yes, my name is Mimi. Could you play this once more? What do you play? At the very beginning. So Puccini foreshadowed this right at the beginning when she showed up and she says, excuse me, I would like to borrow a charger for my iPhone and, and that melody is already there. And now she sings it. Ten, five minutes later, she sings that, that tune. Can we now go to star, star three, star four, <laughs> star four. This is my favorite part of this excerpt because you know what she sings? She sings that, you know, I'm such a simple girl. My name is me, right? You heard, you heard that. It was so simple. Just strings a company. She says, I'm just me, I'm a seamstress. My life is simple, I'm not so interested. And then here, when, when, when we did this excerpt, she says, but when the, the, the snow melts and when the flower blooms, my life Know, it's brighter, and this is so magical because what happens if you look closely at what the second violins are doing? They're playing also almost the same melody as what she's doing, but they're doing it with a little bit shaking. It's it, in music called treble, and, and they and, and what does this? What is this effect? It's can you imagine when when the wind in April in in, in France. When it's a little bit, when it's 15 degrees, it's a nice, um, okay degree, it's not too cold, and then when the breeze starts to happen, and then you hear the sound, it's a kind of imagery. Could we do this once again from, from, can we do this excerpt once again? And I would like all of you to listen, listen to this amazing picture that Puccini is putting together.
Could you imagine autumn leaves, something, something nature, some beautiful things at Bukit Timah I, I don't know. It reminds me so much uh, of, of this. And the first time I heard this, I've never listened to opera before. I study music, yes, but I've never listened to opera, I've never been to a live performance until last year. I, I, I'm studying in Berlin. And because in Berlin we have three, we have three opera houses, so and they're not so expensive. It's like maybe ten euros for a, for a concert. So I, I go there for the first time, and I heard this music from La Boheme, and I go like, wow, that's amazing! It's, it's so touching, and my hair stand up, and I think this is this is what I wanted to do to share that kind of joy and infection to to our audience. We go on to our last quarter, and this is the most important. We started out in the first five minutes where the two of them would meet. The next five minutes, he sings, he is showing, he, 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 he's singing his love song. And after that, he responds. And now we go on to the last one. Can you guess what happens? They sing together. It's, it's really simple. It's a very simple kind of thing. I, what I want you to listen out for is that look at what they're singing. They're going to be singing at the same time, but they're going to be singing different words. And you could imagine if you're, we are on the MRT or if we're in the market and I start talking and, and you start talking to me at the same time. It's going to be quite noisy. I'm not going to hear what you're saying and you're not going to hear what I'm saying. But in music, in opera, this is, I think this is the main thing that impresses me. Because in opera, you can have people singing, you can have the singer singing at the same time, different words, but it's, it's beautiful. For example, um, I just heard a performance. Do you know Barbara of Seville? Have you heard of this name? You, you haven't heard of this, it's okay. You heard of the music. That music, it came from an opera called Barbara of Seville. And at a point in the opera, six people sing together at once. Can you imagine? It's just music, it's just magical. And we're going to do this now, the last section. So what happens here? She says that, you know, let's be friends. And, and she says, you know, we, you, are, you are an artist and we're, we're, we're in different worlds. And so this is the whole story behind La Bohème. It's a very common story. I think it touches me so much because it's not talking about aristocrats um, uh, uh, running around, princes, princesses. No, it's different. It's, we're talking about really commoners, a poor university student who wants to study poetry and a, a poor seamstress. And, unexpectedly because of a charger, because because of something they fall in love with each other. So I think that's enough talking and we should listen to the whole thing. And what I would like you, if you could, is to think about these four sections and think about some experiences that you have when you're meeting your loved ones. It could be your kid, it could be a friend, it could be your partner. 
think about that. I think that relationship is so important, and I think that's why I'm so I'm so I'm so excited about this music. Well, so shall we shall we start with this?
Could we have the singers out, please?